Hi Mad Soldiers, welcome to another bootcamp. In today's video, we're going to talk about introduction to algebraic expressions, we're going to show you how to combine terms, and also how to evaluate algebraic expressions. First, I want to start with some definitions. Algebra is the use of mathematics operations with letters such as x or y to represent unknown values or variables. In algebra, we use letters such as x and y to represent numbers. These letters are called variables. A combination of variables and numbers using the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, as well as powers or roots is called an algebraic expression. For example, if we have 8xy, 2x minus y, we can have negative 3 over 5x squared y, or radical 2x plus 5. So these examples are algebraic expressions. As we can see here, we have combinations of variables and numbers using multiplication. Over here we have combination of variables and numbers using subtraction. So anytime we have combination of variables and numbers used in any operation, that's called an algebraic expression. Let's say I have 5x squared minus 3 over 2x plus 7. Now in this case, the expressions 5x squared, negative 3 over 2x, and 7 these are called terms. But the numerals such as 5 without the x square, negative 3 over 2, and 7, these are called coefficients. So the term 5x square here, we can say that the coefficient of x square is 5. Same thing in negative 3 over 2x. We can say that the coefficient of x is negative 3 over 2. Now that we know what terms and coefficients are, I also want to talk about something very important. Like terms. We can add or subtract two terms together only if they are like terms. But what are like terms? Like terms are terms with the same variables and exactly the same exponents. So like terms can be, say we have negative 5x, 9x, and 20x. Now these three terms are like terms because they have the same variable, which is x, and they have the same exponent. Now anytime you see a variable without exponent, you have to know that they have an exponent of 1. So in this case, all of them have the same variable, which is x, and the same exponent, which is 1. That's why they're like terms. Let me do another example. Let's say I have 3x squared, negative 7x squared, and x squared. So these terms are like terms as well because they have the same variable, which is x, and they have the same exponent, which is 2. Now I'm going to do one more example. So I have 3xy, 15xy, and negative 2xy. So for x and y, we don't see any exponents, so you have to know that they have an exponent of 1. So these three terms, we can say they're like terms because they have same variables, which is x, y, and they have the same exponent, which is 1. So now that you know what like terms are, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to combine terms. How do we combine terms? To combine terms, we have to follow three steps. 
The first step is to identify like terms. The second step is to combine like terms by adding or subtracting the coefficient and do not touch variables or powers. Let me go ahead and do an example. Let's say I have 3x to the power of 3 minus 2x squared plus x to the power of 3 minus 7x squared plus 3. So how do we combine these terms? The first thing that I have to do is I have to identify like terms. How do I do that? I usually like to use geometrical shapes like squares, circles, or just like lines like this in order to identify like terms easier. For example, I see that I have 3x to the third. Do I have another like term here? I have x to the third as well, right? So I'm going to make a square, 3x to the third, and x to the third, and always include the sign as well. So x to the third is the same thing as 1x to the third. Now I have negative 2x squared, so let me just make a line like this. Negative 2x squared is like terms with negative 7x squared. And now I'm left with positive 3. I see that positive 3 doesn't have any like terms, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and combine terms. So I have 3x to the third plus 1x to the third. So I'm going to add the coefficients and I'm not going to touch the variables or the powers. So 3 plus 1 is 4 and x to the power of 3 is just going to stay like that. Now I have negative 2x squared minus 7x squared. So again, I'm going to just add the coefficients and I'm not going to touch the variables or the powers. So negative 2 minus 7 is negative 9. If you guys don't know how to add or subtract numbers with same signs and different signs, go watch our lesson 1. And x to the power of 2 is just going to stay the same. So now we have plus 3, so we're just going to bring down plus 3. So can we combine this more? No, we can because we don't have any like terms. So the answer is just 4x to the third minus 9x squared plus 3. Let me go ahead and do another example. Let's say I have 3a plus 2b to the power of 2 minus 3c plus 5b to the power of 2 minus a. So the first term is 3a. Now do I have any like terms? Yes, I have negative a. So 3a and negative a are like terms. Now I have positive 2b squared. Do I have any like terms? Yes, positive 5b squared is like terms with 2b squared. And I'm left with negative 3c. Negative 3c doesn't have any like terms, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and combine them. 3a minus a. Don't forget there's a 1 here, right? So I have 3a minus 1a. So I'm just going to subtract the coefficients, which is 3 minus 1, which is 2. And then the a is just going to stay the same. Now I have positive 2b squared plus 5b squared. So 2 plus 5 is 7. So I have plus 7 and b squared stays the same. And now I'm left with negative 3c. So I'm just going to bring that down, negative 3c. So I don't have any more like terms. So the answer is 2a plus 7b to the power of 2 minus 3c. Let's say I have 3 times x to the power of 2 plus 3 minus 2 times x squared plus x minus 5. To do this problem, before we go ahead and identify like terms, we have to distribute. What do I mean by that? Here we have 3 times x squared plus 3. Now we're going to have to distribute the 3. How do we distribute? So this number 3 first is going to multiply the positive x squared and then it's going to multiply the positive 3. So I have 3 times x squared is 3x squared and then I have 3 times positive 3 is just positive 9. Now over here I have the same thing. I have negative 2 multiplying in parentheses, I have x squared plus x minus 5. So this negative 2 is going to multiply the x squared, and then it's going to multiply the positive x, and then it's going to multiply the negative 5. 
So I have negative 2 times x squared is just negative 2x squared. And then I have negative 2 times positive x is just negative 2x. Now I have negative 2 times negative 5. Negative 2 times negative 5, those are two numbers multiplying each other with the same sign. So the answer is positive. 2 times 5 is 10. We can go ahead and identify like terms. So I have 3x to the power of 2. Let me make a square. Do I have any like terms? Yes. Negative 2x squared. So I'm going to make a square here as well. Now I have positive 9. Do I have any like terms? Yes. I have positive 10, right? And then I'm left with negative 2x. Negative 2x doesn't have any like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and combine these terms. So I have 3x squared minus 2x squared. So that's 3 minus 2, which is 1. And x squared just stays the same. Positive 9 plus 10. That's positive 19. And then I'm left with negative 2x. So I'm just going to bring that down. Negative 2x. So I don't have any more like terms. So the answer is 1x squared plus 19 minus 2x. 1 times x squared. 1 times x squared is just x squared, right? So I can just remove that 1. And the answer is x squared plus 19 minus 2x. Now mathematicians usually like to write this in descending order of powers. What do I mean by that? Is I write the variable with the highest power first. And then I have minus 2x, the variable with the lowest power and then the constant at the end. So the answer is x squared minus 2x plus 19. Just so you guys know, there's nothing wrong with leaving it as x squared plus 19 minus 2x, but it would just look better if you write it in the descending order, x squared minus 2x plus 19. Okay, so now that you guys know what algebraic expressions are, and you know what like terms are, and you know how to combine terms, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to evaluate algebraic expressions. How do we evaluate algebraic expressions? So we will be given an algebraic expression along with the numerical value of the variables. And then we have to substitute or plug in the numerical value in the place of the variable. Let me go ahead and do an example and you guys will know what I mean. So let's say I have 3xy minus 5y squared plus 2x. x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. So x equals 3. What we have to do is we have to go and plug in 3 wherever we see x and then we have y equals negative 2. So wherever we see y we have to go ahead and plug in negative 2. So I have 3 times instead of x I'm going to put 3 times y, instead of y I'm going to put negative 2, minus 5 times, instead of y I have negative 2 to the power of 2, plus 2 times, instead of x I have 3. It's very important when you multiply, add, or subtract numbers, you have to know the order of operations. If you guys don't know the order of operations, please go ahead and watch our lesson 7. So here I see that I have multiplication, subtraction, I have exponents. So if we follow the order of operations, the first thing that we have to do here is the exponents. So we have negative 2 to the power of 2, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to rewrite 3 times 3 times negative 2 minus 5. So I have negative 2 to the power of 2. I'm going to do it here on the side. I explained in lesson 7 that negative 2 to the power of 2 is just negative 2 multiplying itself 2 times. So I have negative 2 times negative 2. The answer is going to be positive. 2 times 2 is 4. So it's just positive 4, which is just 4. Now I have plus 2 times 3. So here I have 3 times 3, which is 9. And then I'm just going to rewrite times negative 2 minus 5 times 4 plus 2 times 3. Now I still have multiplication that I have to do. So I have 9 times negative 2, that's going to be negative 18. And then I have negative 5 times 4, that's going to be negative 20. And then positive 2 times 3, 
that's positive 6. Negative 18 minus 20, those are two numbers with the same sign, so you keep that sign and you add them. 18 plus 20 is 38, so you have negative 38 plus 6. Now negative 38 plus 6 is two numbers with different signs. You subtract them and you keep the sign of the bigger number, which is negative. 38 minus 6 is 32, so the answer is negative 32. So again, in order for you to solve these problems, you have to know order of operations. Order of operations just tells you which operation you should do first. Like for example, here you're multiplying, you're subtracting, you have an exponent, you're adding. So you have to know if you have to multiply first or you have to add first or you have to do the exponent. That's why you guys have to know the order of operations. And if you don't know it, please go ahead and watch our lesson 7 where we explain everything in details. If you don't know how to add and subtract numbers with same signs and different signs, go ahead and watch our lesson 1. So I'm going to write it here on the side. Please go ahead and watch our lesson 7 for order of operations and then watch our lesson 1 if you don't know how to add and subtract numbers with same signs and different signs. Now I'm going to do another problem. Let's say I have 9x squared plus 2x minus 5 if x equals 1 over 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 1 over 3 wherever I see x. So I have 9 times 1 over 3 to the power of 2 plus 2 times, instead of x again, I'm going to put 1 over 3 minus 5. The first thing that I'm going to do is the exponent because that goes first. So I'm going to do it here on the side. I have 1 over 3 to the power of 2. That's just 1 over 3 multiplying itself 2 times. So I have 1 over 3 times 1 over 3. Now how do we multiply fractions? If you don't know how to do that, go ahead and watch our lesson 5. So I multiply the top with the top, which is 1 times 1. And then bottom with the bottom, which is 3 times 3. So I have 1 over 9. So now I have 9 times 1 over 9 plus 2 times 1 over 3 minus 5. So now I have 9 times 1 over 9. How do I multiply that? If I want to make 9 as a fraction, I just put it over 1. Now I have two fractions multiplying each other. 9 over 1 times 1 over 9. How do I multiply them? I multiply the top with the top and bottom with the bottom. So on top I have 9 times 1, which is 9, over... On the bottom, I have 1 times 9, which is 9. So I have 9 over 9 plus, now the same thing, I have 2 times 1 over 3. I can make this 2 as a fraction by putting it over 1. Now I have 2 over 1 times 1 over 3. The same thing, I multiply the top with the top, which is 2 times 1, which is just 2, over bottom with the bottom, 1 times 3, which is 3. I'm going to rewrite minus 5. Now I have 9 over 9 plus 2 over 3 minus 5. Now I'm going to make this 5 as a fraction by putting it over 1. So now I'm adding and subtracting 3 fractions. How do I do that? If you guys don't know how to add and subtract fractions, please go ahead and watch our lesson 6. So the least common denominator of 9, 3, and 1 is 9. So I'm going to make each fraction with a denominator as 9. I multiply by 1, top and bottom. So 9 times 1 is 9, and 9 times 1 is 9. To make this 3, 9, I multiply by 3. And if I multiply on the bottom, I have to multiply on top as well. Now I have 3 times 3 is 9, and 2 times 3 is 6. To make this 1, 9, I have to multiply by 9. And if I multiply on the bottom, I have to multiply on top as well. So I have 1 times 9 is 9, and 5 times 9 is 45. So now that I have the same denominators, I just keep the denominator which is 9 and then add the top. So on top I have 9 plus 6 minus 45. So now I have 9 plus 6 which is 15 minus 45 is negative 30. So I have negative 30 over 9. Now can I simplify this? Yes I can. I can divide by 3 top and bottom. Negative 30 divided by 3 is negative 10 over 9 divided by 3 is just 3. So the answer is negative 10 over 3. Let me do another example. Let's say I have 2x squared y plus 3xy squared over 2x minus 3y if x equals 2 and 
y equals negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 2 wherever I see x and then plug in negative 3 wherever I see y. So I have 2 times, instead of x I'm going to write 2 to the power of 2 times, instead of y I have negative 3, plus 3 times, instead of x I have 2 times negative 3 to the power of 2 over 2 times 2 minus 3 times negative 3. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of the exponents. I have 2 to the power of 2 and I have negative 3 to the power of 2. I'm going to go ahead and do that on the side. 2 to the power of 2 is just 2 multiplying itself 2 times. 2 times 2 is 4 and then negative 3 to the power of 2 is negative 3 multiplying itself 2 times. Negative 3 times negative 3 is just 9. So I have 2 times 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, times negative 3, plus 3 times 2, times negative 3 to the power of 2 is just 9, over 2 times 2, minus 3 times negative 3. So now let me go ahead and multiply. So I have 2 times 4 is 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. So I have negative 24. Now I have positive 3 times 2 is 6 times 9 is positive 54. So plus 54 over on the bottom I have 2 times 2 which is 4. And then I have negative 3 times negative 3 that's going to be positive 9. Negative 24 plus 54 is positive 30 over 4 plus 9 is 13. So the answer is just 30 over 13. Now I'm going to do one more problem. Since we introduced absolute value in lesson 2, I'm going to do a problem with absolute value. Let's say I have x, absolute value of y plus z. If x equals 2, y equals to negative 1, and z equals to negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Instead of x, I have 2. Instead of the absolute value, I have negative 1 for y plus negative 3 for z. Now I'm going to work inside of the absolute value. So I have negative 1. Now don't forget there's a 1 here in front of parentheses that is multiplying the negative 3. So I have positive 1 times negative 3. That's going to be negative 3. I have 2. Instead of the absolute value, I have negative 1 minus 3. That's going to be negative 4. Now again, I'm going to rewrite the 2. Now what is the absolute value of negative 4? Anytime we have a negative number inside of the absolute value, when we take it out, it's going to be positive. So negative 4, when we take it out of the absolute value, is just going to be 4. And 2 times 4 is 8. So the answer is just 8. So that was the end of the video. Today we introduced algebraic expressions, we showed how to combine terms, and also how to evaluate algebraic expressions. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next bootcamp. Don't forget to subscribe.